Hello guys and welcome back to the Simply Code programming channel. This is Vikesh and let's get started with today's topic which is about discussing the concrete classes in the collections framework. In the previous session we talked about the interfaces part of it where we discussed about sets, the lists and the queues and we also touched a bit upon the abstract classes and like I mentioned earlier you don't need to generally use these abstract classes directly in your Java program but you must be aware that they exist. You see some arrows here right if you see if I just scroll up you see multiple kind of arrows here. These arrows mean that if the arrow goes from bottom to top it means this particular element is a type of the parent. It's basically a, it de denoting a parent child kind of relationship. So for example here you see tree set is basically uh, a navigable set and also extend, uh, extends abstract set which extends set. So similarly you can see all kind of uh, complex relationships here and generally you don't need to remember all of those you only need to remember the few and those few are basically easily can be spotted. For example, whenever you see a tree set, it means it's basically a type of set. Whenever you see a word called list, that means that it is a type of list and you all whenever you see a word called queue, then it means that it is a type of queue. So let's understand these classes. Let's first go to the list interface. So you can see list interface has the relationship with abstract list. And from there it goes down to array list. Abstract list has another child which is called abstract sequential list which is another abstract class and which has a concrete class which is called linked list. So let's understand these two collections or these two uh, types of list right now. So when we talk about array list let's understand this. We already have covered arrays. So what are array list? They are very similar to arrays in in a way that they are also indexed based collections. So you can store elements and access them based on the index position starting from zero going till the length minus one uh, index. And this is an ordered collection. You can access the elements only in a predefined sequence. It can obviously accept duplicates as well. And these all our properties are also applicable to arrays. The differentiating factor here is that array list is a dynamic array. It's not a static array. If you remember when we talked about arrays, we had to initialize it or we had to specify a fixed size of it while we initialize it. Once you have initialized the array size, you cannot change the array size. It is static, it is fixed. So if you have created an array of elements 10 and if you're trying to store the 11th element, you are going to get an array of array index bound of exception. But in case of array list, it dynamically updates its size based on the number of elements stored. You can still initialize it with some, some initial size. Let's say you initialize an array list and you say that you want to initialize it with a size of 10 elements. Absolutely fine. But the moment you, you try to store the 11th element, array list is going to dynamically update its size from 10 to something else. So it will keep updating its size based on the number, number of elements which are coming to the collection. That's the whole property of array list. So remember it's it's used in the cases when you have an ordered collection to store and you want to access them based on the index and you want a dynamic update of the size. The second sibling of it which is linked list is also a type of list but it has slightly different properties than array list. In case of array list it was an index based collection. You access the element based on the indexes but in linked list, you access the elements based on the previous and the next element. That's pretty much what it knows. So an item can only be accessed in a particular sequence starting from head to the tail. And when we talk about linked list, the idea is that you have an element which will have a data and it will also have a pointer or a basically a reference. That reference will be pointing to the next element in the linked list. Similarly, the next element will store the value the actual data and it will also store a reference to the next element. So you can see if you have to go to the fifth element, you cannot directly say link list of five the way you can say this in array list because array list is an index based position uh, list, right? So you can access the zeroth element or the fifth element or the tenth element directly 
just in one line or one go but in case of linked list you cannot access the fifth element or the last element of the linked list directly you have to start from the first element and keep jumping the references till you reach the last element that's the property of linked list so these are the two types of list now let's talk about the type of set a type of set which is not mentioned here is hash set which is a very popular type so a set generally has two popular types hash set and tree set so let's talk about both of those if i talk about hash set the property is that it will inherit the existing properties of set which is that element should be unique that's good but along with that hash set will not remember or honor the order in which the elements are inserted into it it will if let's say if you insert 15 or 20 different elements inside hash set and then if you try to iterate over the hash set every time the order in which the elements are accessed and printed will be different every time the order of accession will be different every time the act the uh, way in which the elements are accessed their order will be different you, you cannot predict that and that's the property of hash set whereas when we talk about tree set in case of tree set you can have a sort of fixed order and a tree hierarchy so a tree hierarchy if you know about the tree data structure from the data structure in algorithm section you already would know what a tree looks like basically it has a root and it has child this is basically you can call this a tree as well right so whenever you have to store the values in a in a tree fashion where you can navigate through the parent and childs then you would use the tree set and remember since it is a set it will still inherit the uniqueness property of set so that's about hash set and tree set so we covered about list we covered about sets now let's talk about these ones which are vector stack and priority queue so let's first understand about priority queue so you would use a priority queue when you need a fifo arrangement but at the same time if there are few elements in the queue which cannot wait to be executed or processed when their turn comes they wanted to be executed on priority so whenever you have such use case where you want to uh, to maintain a fifo fashion collection but at the same time you also want to allow few elements of it to override this fifo arrangement and get processed ahead of their queue number so you can use priority queue in those cases talking about stack let's understand stack first and stack is a lifo arrangement last in first out so remember in your house when you when you put plates uh, the the normal dinner plates over one uh, one over each other you are basically creating a stack so the property is that the plate which is put first on the table will be picked up at the very last and the plate which is put the last on the stack let's say you put five plates on top of one uh, one on top of other then the fifth plate will be consumed first anybody would pick the plate from the very top they will not pick the bottom plate because it's it's almost impossible if you have a big stack you cannot pull out the bottom most plate the stack will fall down so you will always pick out the elements from the top so it has a lifo arrangement so whenever you have to create a last in first out kind of arrangement in your program for storing collections you will use stack talking about vectors vectors are very similar to lists they are exactly similar there is basically one major difference is that vectors are thread safe and lists are not thread safe now list has provided a way to be thread safe we will cover that later but for now you can understand that whenever you have a program in which you want to access a collection in a thread safe manner where two threads cannot modify the same element at the same time then you will use vectors so we covered about the complete collections framework classes the interfaces and the abstract classes and always remember the uh, the reason why you will use array list or linked list or a hash set or a tree set or a vector or a priority queue or a stack that is the most important concept i want you to take away from this session so that's all about this session and in the next session we are going to do a hands on exercise of an array list if you like this video a thumbs up will be massively appreciated and please do not forget to subscribe to simply code for more programming related videos thank you and we'll meet again in the next session